Hey, sports fans, welcome back to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. I just wanted to give my thoughts on Michigan's 86 to 78 victory over LSU tonight. What a game! This game was highly entertaining, highly frustrating, and what sports is <laughs> and right now. It's just, whoo, what a high right now. I tell you what, if you didn't see the game, man, try to find a copy of it because this was just a super fun game to watch. The first half, LSU was on fire. They were hitting fadeaway jump shots, especially Thomas. He had 19 points in the first half for the Tigers. He was just on fire. But at half, Michigan climbed back in. Michigan was getting the shots they wanted. Michigan was hitting their shots, and Michigan actually led 43-42 to 42 at halftime. And Eli Brooks was leading the way, I think, at 13 points in the first half for Michigan. Thomas, of course, was leading for LSU. The second half was just total, just craziness. LSU would go on like a 10-12-3 run. Michigan calls a timeout. Michigan goes on a 10 nothing run. LSU calls a timeout. LSU goes on a run. Michigan calls a timeout. It was back and forth and back and forth. It was just such a good game. And it was, uh, it was so much fun. Definitely in the second half, too. I think that Thomas was getting tired. Michigan did a really good job of having Chandy Brown cover him. And uh, so then... The other LSU players, Smart, started going off. Both Smart and Thomas finished 10 of 23 for the game. So they did. They were like LSU's offense. But Michigan was just balanced. Michigan had four players in double figures. Eli Brooks with 21. Chandy Brown, 21 points off the bench on 6 of 9 shooting. He was aggressive. He had been in a slump the last two games. He had one shot, I think it was, against Texas Southern. And he did hardly anything against Ohio State in the Big Ten tournament. Just he was aggressive, he was driving, and that was the thing that Michigan's kind of figured out along the way is that the refs were calling drives, they weren't calling other fouls, and they started taking advantage of that, or at least catching up. Man, I tell you what, the first four minutes of the second half, Michigan had five fouls called against him in the first four minutes. It was insane what the refs were calling. Michigan was getting a couple blocks, and they got called for fouls. Honestly, both sides were yelling at the refs. You had the announcers kind of looking at replays every so often. The replays are terrible by CBS, too. They're showing you, like, a shot that was made. They're not showing you the replay of the foul or the turnover where, you know, players are being hit and such. They show you. It's like they're trying to protect the refs because the refs are trash. Really, the refs are just trash. Both sides were complaining about the refs. The refs were terrible. They even pointed out towards the end of the stretch, uh, down the stretch there, where uh, Davis was called for a foul by the ref on the other side of the court. Two refs closer didn't call it. The ref way on the other side who had to look through 10 players called the foul. I'm mean, just insane what they were calling. And by that point, both teams were in the double bonus. So going back to the refing too, right? Michigan was five fouls in the first four minutes, six in like the first, you know, whatever. Really short, short, short. LSU got called for the next like six fouls. So Michigan actually got in the bonus first. It just shows you kind of how these refs were just uh, just crazy. The refs were just not good again. And that's just the theme carrying on in the NCAA tournament. It's the refs are just not very good at all. Now, getting back to the game. <sighs> Hunter Dickinson really was, even though he had a double-double, he wasn't a big factor in this game. His ability to hit out of double teams, though, the, where he would almost get the hockey assist. He would pass out and Michigan would swing the ball over for an open three. Usually it went to... Chandy Brown or Eli Brooks was very important. But man, you can tell Dickinson is getting really frustrated. He's getting no calls. These smaller teams are hacking and holding him all game, and he gets absolutely no calls, and he complains about it, and he gets no calls. And I'm surprised he didn't foul out. He had four fouls, and they put him back in when uh, LSU was doing the press. So they had him in the center so he could get the ball and pass over top of people and such, and he had a great pass to Wagner for a breakaway slam that was, you know, kind of the exclamation point of the game. So Dickinson, again, he's a freshman. Hopefully he can learn from this and not talk so much because he get, he got called for two, at least two offensive fouls. And every time, it, it, the refs don't like being talked to. They don't. And they know, the refs know they're not great, but they don't like being shown up by anyone, especially a freshman. So Dickinson's got to learn, just keep your mouth shut. I know, like almost every foul, the, each side is complaining though, so it's, oh, it's just annoying. A few key things here. 
Michigan was up by six-ish points, I think it was. Mike Smith just had a brain cramp. He had Michigan had the ball, and he shot an air ball as the clock was kind of running down. And then Michigan came down. Michigan got called for a foul. LSU hit two free throws. And then Michigan inbounded the ball, and Mike Smith traveled again. So what did Howard do? This was not a demotion. This was extremely smart by Howard. He took Smith out, who was five inches shorter than Thomas, who was using his height advantage pretty much all game to get his points, right? But he took out, Howard took out Smith and put in Chaundy Brown, who had been like the defensive stopper that he'd been for Michigan all year, and put Chaundy Brown on uh, in the game, and that helped. Then the switch, I think a switch happened. Wagner ended up on Thomas, and Wagner got the super defensive stop. It was epic. I got to say, Franz Wagner had a horrible first half, and man, he completely turned it around in the second half. He finished 5 of 9 for the game with 15 points. I think he was 1 of 5 to start the game. He started. He had a couple three-pointers. He started getting to the free throw line a little bit. You got to build your confidence. It was really good to see a Wagner engage, because he was not there in the first half. He was not. And he was frustrated, and you can tell if Wagner like starts the game off Clicking a little bit, he's going to have a good game. So it's really nice to see Wagner not start off good and then be able to click into the game and get engaged. And that was very helpful. Ugh. Can't talk enough about Chandy Brown, his defense, just the way he scored. 21 points, just just great job. You had some bench there. Davis had one free throw. In fact, Michigan's free throws in the second half, if I, I'm sorry if I said this again, they were 13 of 14 in the second half on Michigan free throws. The only miss was Davis, and he's a 50% free throw shooter. I'm very happy when Michigan could get, especially when you're in the lead like that, you don't want any empty possessions. You've got to get a point every game. Sorry, every possession. Get a point. you got to hit one of your free throws. One last little bit here. I love stats, and I, saw, I heard the stat in the game that whichever team wins the rebounding, that team has not lost during the season. So if Michigan wins the win, win, wins the rebound battle, Michigan has not lost. When LSU wins the rebound battle, LSU has not lost. It stayed true. Michigan won the rebound battle 37 to 30 tonight. I just love stats like that, especially when they work and Michigan wins. Whew. Man, what a game. So much fun. Don't know yet who Michigan's going to be playing next, Colorado or Florida State. I don't know. I I don't. I would. I think I'd prefer honestly to play Colorado because LSU. Sorry, Florida State has a lot of length and they're very athletic. But you know, you, so was LSU. LSU had length in the front court. Michigan had the advantage in the sorry in the back court. Michigan had the advantage in the you know center and forward position. It, either way, whatever team you're going to be playing is going to be playing well, and you're going to have to beat them. And so we see how it goes. Just whew, great game. Glad to get the win. Under the Sweet 16, recover, rest. No one's going home because everyone's staying inside the bubble. Practice, work on things. Hopefully, you know, the team can stay strong. It's great. Another stat I heard on the way home, Chandia Brown is hitting 52% on three-pointers in the tournament so far. Like, whoop, keep it going. Nuts. I'm not Chandy Brown. I said the wrong name. Eli Brooks is hitting 52% on the three-point lines this tournament. So keep that up. Sorry, a little tired, a little jacked up on some sugar and caffeine. Woo! <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your comments in the section below. Thanks to the subscribers. Always appreciate that. Until I see you guys next time, go boo!